Now then, immersive exhibitions have become extremely popular, but they vary hugely from the work of Van Gogh, Dali, Klimt and Monet projected on walls to newer, more innovative digital work. And some digital art- artists say that the cheap immersive treatment of dead art is, is giving the industry a bad name and that the word immersive has become a gimmicky tagline. Lucy Hardcastle is a designer and digital artist who runs her own studio in London. She has made work for the Victorian Albert Museum and Chanel. Uh, she joins us, as does Charlotte Stewart, who's managing director of My Art Broker. Good afternoon to you both. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. Um, Lucy, you are critical of these, what I suppose are, if somebody says immersive, it's often the first thing they think about because they have been, there have been so many of them and they are so public, this sort of projecting um, famous artists onto walls. Mm. Yes, and I would say that immersion really requires the combination of many of the senses to be engaged Whereas I think with that exhibition in particular, considering it's just imagery being projected on a wall, I really don't think it could qualify as being immersive. Right. So what? It's a tagline, but you don't yes. you don't think of it as immersive. I mean, there's music. You're surrounded by it. Is that not immersing you in in the painting of Van Gogh? I just think it's it's not enough for that tagline. That it really just becomes about marketing at that point. Um, marketing what to sell as well at quite high ticket prices yes yeah for sure Charlotte Stewart are you are you as critical as Lucy um no I'm not um and I mean obviously these these exhibitions and and it's absolutely true it's a bit of a zeitgeist word at the moment um they've had some scathing reviews I think um you know new media has always called controversy and divided opinion and that's really what we're talking about is new media um and it's what art does and it's it's meant to question things I think you have to look at particularly the artists that have been exhibited in this way recently. And there's a few different contexts around them. I mean, David Hockney was very much involved in in the Lightroom exhibition, Bigger and Closer, which I think Jonathan Jones called Smaller and Further Away um, in a scathing review. But I think really you've got to understand the context of of the works that are being used in this way. Um, And David Hockney was an artist who dedicated his entire life to Mm. experimentation and new perspectives. And, um, you know, his iPad drawings came to the market in 2010. But there was a lot more work that went into the Hockney one than went into that goes into some of these ones. I think so. And you could put you could perhaps you could look at something like Van Gogh. um, And, you know, the question you really have to ask yourself is, is would Van Gogh have condoned it? Well, none of us can be sure of that. I mean, the artist who sold one painting in his lifetime and then posthumously um, became probably the most famous painter of all time. I think he'd be probably rubbing his hands together that people were spending <laughs> thousands of pounds collectively to view his work. Lucy, Lucy Hardcastle, what would you, if somebody said, I want to go to an immersive show, what would you be sending them to? And what would the experience be that is so different? I mean, for me, when it comes to the the type of work that I do and what I would call as being immersive is something that really feels like you're transporting the audience somewhere else. And I would say that galleries such as the 180 Strand and, say, Aerobite or the Serpentine have often done a, a great job at that, where maybe there's, you know, something that's physically interactive um, maybe there's like scent or fragrance involved elements like that 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 make the audience feel like they have a, an element of control in an involvement in the work. So search harder for your immersive experience. Lucy Hardcastle, Charlotte Stewart, thank you.